This is Dan Neiman, food writer for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, back with another non-musical podcast. Today's column is called A Saucy Business. Charlie Backer has told the story of his company's origin many times. It goes like this. He was going to host a Super Bowl party at his home in Oakville. Because he likes hot food, he decided to try his hand at creating a hot sauce, one not just with heat, but with a lot of flavor too. Quote, I bought some random stuff at Deerberg's and brought it home and created a hot sauce, he said. Everybody at the party liked it, so he made it again and again. Then, as these origin stories often go, his friends began pressing him to bottle and sell it. And thus was Hot Charlie's born. Backer, now 36, began selling his original sauce in August 2017. He picked up one retailer after another. The Oakville Butcher Block was the first. At one point, the sauce and other products were available in 1,100 stores around the country. But then the coronavirus hit. Biggest retailer, Home Goods, temporarily shut down all of its stores. Other companies carrying the sauces followed suit, and those that did not suffered from greatly decreased foot traffic. Last month, Hot Charlie's original hot sauce began being carried in a local grocery store chain that means a lot to backer, Deerberg's. That is to say, the place where he originally bought the jalapenos, habaneros, and fresh garlic that he mixed with things he had at home for his first batch of the sauce. It is also where he picked up all of the ingredients for many subsequent batches. At one point, he said, he was buying so many jalapenos there that an employee in the produce department went in the back and brought him an entire tray of the peppers. Along with the original flavor, Hot Charlie's also makes a ghost pepper hot sauce. Ghost peppers are insanely hot, but Backer said his goal was to highlight the flavor while keeping the heat from being overpowering. They also make hot cheddar popcorn. The company additionally used to make spice mixes it called dust, but stopped production when the pandemic hit. The dust was sold at home goods. Quote, COVID adjusted so many elements of my business. I put a lot of the other products like the seasonings on hold. It is sort of like starting all over again, Backer said. Once the company first got going, Backer quit his job to devote all of his attention to it. Quote, it was full time for about a year and a half there. It was the most awesome and scariest roller coaster of my life. All I was doing every day was going out and trying to get it into restaurants and retailers, he said. When the pandemic came and the economy fell off the table, Backer returned to the corporate world. He works at a Florida-based professional employer organization. That is a company that takes small businesses under its wing to negotiate together for health benefits and workers' compensation programs, and they also offer payroll and human resource services. He's still there, although Hot Charlie's was able to rebound earlier this summer with the help of federal funding and a stimulus check. Production began again in August. Backer said he is now in talks to expand to other retail chains, both regionally and nationally, but he won't say which ones. Backer said those sauces are probably used most often to make chicken wings, and he also likes it on pizza. When he makes hamburgers, he mixes the sauce with mayonnaise for a creamy, spicy spread. Some of the recipes he and others have devised for the sauce are on the company's website, hotcharlies.com. Among these recipes is a variation on a Bloody Mary called a Bloody Charlie. Backer created it three years ago for an appearance on a local news channel. That's amusing because he no longer drinks. Quote, when I got sober, that's when I started Hot Charlie's. I'm grateful because it gave me something to focus my energy on, he said. Okay, that's it for today's podcast. We'll see you next week and have a Merry Christmas.